minerals, and rocks. In this mini lecture, we will talk about how minerals are formed and a specific group of minerals called silicates. Minerals are naturally occurring inorganic solids that form through a process called crystallization. Crystallization is simply just the growth of a solid from either a gas or a liquid whose constituent atoms come together in a specific arrangement or structure. This basic arrangement is then repeated out in all directions as other atoms come together to make up that mineral. The environment must be suitable though for crystal growth to occur. In other words, the type of mineral you're going to have depends upon the concentration of atoms that are available as well as the proper temperature and pressure. In this example we see the mineral halite which is made up of sodium and chlorine atoms that come together to form a repeating cube-like structure. If minerals can grow in an unrestricted environment, they will tend to grow to their idealized shape or form a nice crystal-like structure. Most common though, minerals grow in a restricted environment. In other words, the mineral will grow until it encounters another barrier, such as a crystal, and then it will stop growing. In this case, the crystal structure may take on any shape or the shape of the constraints that surround it. There are a number of different chemical classes of minerals, such as native elements, silicates, carbonates, oxides, sulfides, sulfates, among others. In this mini lecture, we will focus on the silicates class of minerals. Silicate minerals are a group of minerals that contain primarily silicon and oxygen atoms. This is the most important mineral group and by far the most abundant number of minerals in Earth's crust are made up of silicate minerals. Most of the rock forming minerals are in fact silicate minerals. Both silicon and oxygen are very abundant in Earth's crust and they come together to form a unique geometric shape called a tetrahedron. A tetrahedron essentially is made up of one silicon atom and four oxygen atoms that come together to form a pyramid-like shape. These pyramids then come together and stack up to form the various types of silicate minerals. In this table you can see that this arrangement is either a single tetrahedron, a single chain tetrahedron, a double chain tetrahedron, a sheet like chain of tetrahedrons, and a framework of tetrahedrons. Let's now examine several of our common silicate minerals starting first with our isolated tetrahedron. The most common isolated tetrahedron mineral is the mineral olivine. Olivine is primarily composed of single SiO tetrahedrons, that's silica oxygen tetrahedrons, that are linked by magnesium or iron. It's a high temperature mineral, relatively dense, about 3.3 grams per cubic centimeters. It is a primary constituent of Earth's mantle and the ocean crust. It is typically a nice olive green or that kind of green looking color, and it has a glassy luster. Next is our single chain tetrahedron linkages. The most common of these are the pyroxenes. Uh, just like we saw with olivine, pyroxenes also are high temperature minerals. They are dark green to black in color, um, are rich in iron and magnesium as well. The main difference here is that they have two directions of cleavage that intersect at 90 degrees. Now compare that to double chain linkages of tetrahedrons, or what are commonly called the amphiboles. They also are black to dark green in color and look very similar to pyroxenes. The main difference here is that these are elongate crystals that do not cleave in right degree angles. In other words, they cleave at a 120 or 60 degree angle. The most common amphibole is a mineral called hornblende, which is found commonly in granite. Minerals that form from sheets of tetrahedrons are known as micas. These are minerals that are rich in potassium and aluminum along with the silicate tetrahedrons. Because the tetrahedrons occur in a sheet-like appearance, most of these minerals have one direction of cleavage, or what's known as perfect cleavage. They peel like the pages of a book. There are two types of common micas. The first is muscovite, which is a white or colorless mica, and biotite, a little bit more rich in iron and magnesium that is darker in color, often black to very dark brown. Micas are very common to the rock granite and are found in many different types of metamorphic rocks. Let's now look at common framework tetrahedron minerals. 
The most abundant is a group called the feldspars. Feldspars are very common in granite and is a primary constituent of crustal rock. These are relatively hard minerals because of that rigid tetrahedral framework. Feldspars typically have a hardness of about six. Most have what's called a porcelainous luster. It looks a little bit like porcelain. And they have good cleavage, typically in two directions. Two common feldspars are known as potassium feldspar, which is rich in potassium, obviously. It's commonly pink or salmon in color and is often known as the mineral orthoclase. And plagioclase feldspar, a little bit more rich in sodium and calcium, plagioclase often has striations or little grooves that are part of the crystal structure on the cleavage planes. The mineral quartz is also an example of a framework silicate mineral. The difference here is that quartz is composed almost entirely of silica oxygen. It is relatively hard, hardness of about seven, has a glassy luster, and can appear in many different types of colors. For example, purple, which is amethyst, orange, which is known as citrine, smoky quartz, which is gray, milky quartz, which is white, etc. Therefore, often color is a difficult determinant of quartz. Instead, you should use the streak of the mineral. All of those have a streak color of white. Again, quartz is very hard. It's mostly composed of tetrahedrons in a very tight framework where all the bonds are between silica and oxygen and are pretty much equal strength. Therefore, it does not have any cleavage or weakness upon which it breaks. Instead, quartz has a unique property called conchoidal fracture, which looks a little bit like chipped glass. So to review, this mini lecture looked at the specific class of silicate minerals, where we examined the different arrangements of silica oxygen tetrahedrons and the different types of minerals they formed. From isolated tetrahedrons such as olivine, to single chains that were pyroxenes, double chains, amphiboles, sheets, which were the micas, and frameworks, which included feldspars and quartz. This ends our mini lecture on the silicate minerals.